So, welcome back to uh, Select International's The Sidebar. This is uh, episode two, uh, so thanks for uh, taking the time to watch. Uh, today we've got uh, a couple of longtime friends of mine. Uh, a lot of people always ask me how I got into the industry. Well, uh, me and Matthew pretty much got into it about the same time. Uh, it That's might right. be like a year after me or so, back in 2002. Uh, and then, of course, uh, my longtime friend and mentor, who's uh, actually the one who kind of guided me and molded me where I needed to go and <laughs> shot me on my course, uh, Mr. Tim O'Rourke, who's the uh, president of the Grafton Group. Um, so, uh, Tim, uh, when did you get into the, in the industry? You know, back in the uh, 80s, I sat there. We saw in 1981, March 30th, the attempted assassination on uh, President Reagan. I was actually working for a uh, entertainment venue mm -hmm. and taking care of uh, some of the folks that were coming there to perform and everything. And uh, I enjoyed it. It got me exposure uh, to to the field. But after about two years, I decided I really don't care for these people. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go too far into that. But after watching the Hinckley attempt on President Reagan, I realized I didn't know quite as much as I think I needed to know. So I uh, did a lot of soul searching, uh, wound up uh, hooking up with Kurt, uh, who owned a company that was into protective services, and then uh, learned some things there and eventually went to ESI, which is the Harvard of uh, executive protection training here in the States. Uh, now Bob Dugan has sold that school, uh, but you know it kind of set me on my way with the proper training, the proper knowledge. Uh, the staff at the time were ex Secret Service. Uh, uh, you had a, the person that was heading it all up was an ex Marxist revolutionary uh, who had been deported from this country three times, captured in South America, tortured. Uh, you see a lot of. Uh, what I call glamour shots of Bob, where his face is all nice and smooth, trust me, uh, it's not quite that, uh, after they got done with him. And uh, I realized, okay, you know, this, this domestic security situation, low profile, what you would call, not what you would see at Blackwater, guns up and, and ready to go, uh, was, was something that I wanted to really apply myself to. And, uh, you know, as the, the 90s came through, uh, I got involved with uh, a couple partners. We organized a, a, a crew there, and uh, we had good success in, in running some of the largest protective details uh, in the United States. I mean, 20-man details is, is a pretty big deal. It's, that's huge. Yeah. You don't see a lot of huge. that. It's usually like no, one and two-man details these days. Um, you know, in, in some of the the fellas out there that have been around for a while got a little gray hair like we do. <laughs> uh, remember, you know, I'm looking at Matthew and I'm like, I haven't seen him. Holy shit. Hey, it looks good on you. Well, it looks <laughs> good. You know I mean? You know, uh, but I sat back and I, I started thinking about, um, you know, how do we run this? I, I started being invited to uh, teach some of my, my philosophies uh, at alumni association conferences and everything, and enjoyed that. Uh, and then, you know, that just kind of manifested into, you know, teaching and talking about it and training. Uh, and then our, our own crew started up uh, or, or grew from there. And it was, it was a beautiful thing. I, I enjoyed it. It got me around the world a few times on several continents and multiple countries. And it uh, exposed me to a lot of operators, some good, some not so good, mm -hmm. which we all have dealt with yeah. uh, in the past. And, and, I, and I just enjoy it. And then I get to meet folks like you, uh, which bring a whole set of other backgrounds, cultures, experience uh, to the to the profession and you know I'm one of those people that there is no right way. There are ways of doing this. And the moment you put up walls, you resist anything new. Uh, and you know there's a lot of people that fell victim to that. 
Uh, there's still some that may be watching this video that are saying that internet thing is probably not going to catch on. <laughs> Uh, you know, because they haven't adapted to new technology and, and moved through it uh, and put it to use as, as well as it can. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is how I got into it. It's uh, been almost 30 plus years, uh, going back to the 80s uh, and whatever this year is now, uh, 2016, we'll, uh, we'll see what it brings us and, and I've enjoyed it quite a bit. It's, it's been good, and like I said, meeting folks like you, Matthew, uh, and you know hundreds of other folks uh, that have either stuck with it and, and continued pushing on and honed their skills, both here and overseas, uh, and continued their passion for what they're doing. You know, uh, the symbol of ESI was always a, it's a Chinese character, life force. Uh, and, you know, that's tattooed on my shoulder. It, it had a profound impact on me. Uh, and I believe assassination is the cruelest form of censorship. Uh, and our job is to make sure that every voice is heard. Uh, you know, not every country has the First Amendment, but it is people, you know, like yourself, Eric, and, and many others that frequent this, this establishment here, Bad Monkey, that uh, have made that possible for this entire country and many around the world. Uh, the U.S.'s best export is security uh, and you know stability in those areas, and, and I appreciate everybody that's taken part in providing that. Yeah. So, first thing I got out of that, I mean, you've had. 20 plus years before I even got in the industry. You're already in it. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> making me your feel age there. <laughs> let, me, let me have another drink here. <laughs> hey, Matthew, like I said, me and you came in about the same time uh, right. in the industry. What inspired you to get into the industry? I had been in corporate America for 15 years and um, just really I had a desire to do something a little bit more. I did a lot of training on the side, met them through some of that training and uh, had an opportunity to see one of the vehicles where you were at and did a little research, found out a little bit more about the company, realized I needed some experience to get in there, so I went with a sub-company for a year uh, doing some ATM overwatch and stuff like that for repair guys and stuff. Got a little bit of exposure and then was introduced to the industry. I believe my first uh, FTO experience was uh, with you <laughs> and uh, I, I had a really good time doing that. And, found the brotherhood to be a, a big value and just from there it just expanded. I fell in love with the training, the process, and the people I was working with and just tried to stay in it. One of the things I've noticed over the years and how this industry has evolved is um, when the high threat stuff really started coming into play 2003 and continues on throughout various uh, countries uh, in the Middle East. And uh, the perception from practitioners that have been doing executive protection for a while uh, didn't seem like they wanted to accept the guys high threat that mm -hmm. were doing it. Uh, I've heard different labels such as cowboys over there. They're not doing the actual protection and everything. And uh, one of the things I'm very happy to see is that perception has changed quite a bit. I'm seeing more and more guys that can, are transitioning from the high threat and being welcomed in to a lot more domestic assignments, providing that they come through and, and go through an executive protection program right. to go over protocols and etiquettes and, right. and the little interest, uh, uh, intricacies that make you successful on right. an EP detail. As you said, um, you're not going to be going guns up or you know uh, carrying a rifle on a domestic detail. Um, I don't right. care who you work for. Uh, it's not it's not happening, and it's uh, and it's not about executive protection. You know, if right. you go for your gun, you've already failed. Yeah. Right, and that's one of the things you you've always taught me for years. Right. Um, so yeah, um, before we go any further, I, I didn't even announce where it was. You put in a plug in here. Uh, we are downtown Tampa in Ebor City at the Bad Monkey. It's one of my favorite establishments. It's a uh, military uh, memorabilia bar. Uh, so the owners and the general managers were nice enough to open it up for us today, uh, so we could go ahead and make our uh, our uh, episode two and stuff. So that's good, uh, gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for uh, coming out today, meeting no with problem. me. Uh, helping us put together this and uh, hopefully uh, within the next few weeks we'll have episode three 
uh, ready for release. We'll bring in some new people. And uh, anybody that's interested in uh, joining in on this video, um, as you can see here, there was a plug for Executive Security International here uh, today. We all know that I was Select International. Um, it's not about this. This is to grow the industry. Right. Um, as Tim mentioned, there's not just one way to do things. Although three and three equals six, so does four plus two. So does one plus five. Um, so there's lots of good training providers out there. I stress that. I can't stress that enough. Um, so I encourage you to get as much knowledge and training uh, anywhere you can. You right. know, as long as you're going with a quality uh, provider. So right. on that note, uh, thanks, guys. Cheers. Slancha. There we go, buddy.